Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica Likewise. I'm studying for my BCBA exam and I'm making videos for you so you can study along with me because I believe sharing is caring and we are all in this together. Today, I'm gonna to discuss the components needed for an experiment in ABA. Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to discuss the components needed for an experiment in ABA. Well, what is an experiment in ABA? Well, every time we're conducting an experiment, we're answering a question. So maybe we have a hypothesis, which says if we give child access to playing with sand on a five minute interval schedule um, during an ABA therapy session, it's going to decrease the child's hand flapping. Or maybe we're going to say if we use an expressive follow up when doing discrete trial training, it's gonna increase the child's rates of tax acquisitions, right? We're either making a prediction or we're answering a question. It can be written in either form, but that's what is we're doing when we're making, when we're doing an ABA study. So what do we need in order for an ABA study to be considered effective and to be considered really sound, a sound study? Well, number one, you need at least one subject in the study. Now that doesn't mean you only need one subject. You can have multiple participants in fact, the more times you can demonstrate an effect on a behavior across more participants, the more strong the functional relationship that you can make, right? But you need at least one subject in the study. You also need to have at least one setting in the study. Now, if you're using a multiple baseline design, you may be conducting an experiment in multiple settings. That's completely fine, but you do need at least one setting. The other thing that you need is an experimental design. You need to know how you're gonna conduct this study. Are you gonna be using an ABA withdrawal design? Are you gonna be using a multiple participant design? Are you gonna be using a base, excuse me, a multiple baseline design? How are you, are you gonna be doing um, changing criterion? How are you going to conduct this study? You can't necessarily just make it up as you go. Although actually sometimes you can change a study and salvage it by changing the, the format of a study. The other thing that you need to have is at least one behavior. If you don't have a behavior, right, the behavior is the dependent variable, well, then you don't have a study. Again, though, you can have more than one behavior. If, again, if you're using a multiple baseline design. The other thing that you need is you need one treatment, one independent variable, one intervention in the study in order to demonstrate an effect between the treatment, the intervention, the independent variable, and the behavior, the dependent variable, right? You have to have both of them. The other thing that's really important in ABA is you have a system for measuring your results that's visual. We see this all the time looking at ABA journals. We see this when we're done collecting data after every um, session with the child, we're taking graphic data. A visual component is one of the core requirements for a study in ABA. So I really hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that if you're setting for exam, now you understand the things that you need. So if you have one of those questions, you certainly get it right. And also if you're conducting a study or in real life, you're reading a journal, it helps you understand better the parameters of what an ABA study is. So if you liked this video, subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna be posting more videos just like this one on a daily basis as I'm studying. And there is a study note that goes with every single one of my videos. They are just study notes. They're not formal blog posts, but you can find them on my blog at hopeeducationservices.com. Stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.